you know, most people actually store their value in their native currency they use. You know, like we always talk about investments and gold investing, but most people actually hold, you know, fiat currencies. That's like the, the biggest store of value, even though it's a very lousy store of value. So, so definitely, you know, in terms of like an electronic cash system that Bitcoin or Bitcoin's cash is trying to be, is that, you know, we're, everything's electronic cash system. The dollar's electronic cash system at this point. And but the but the the rules of the game are fair in in cryptocurrency when you have a white paper that says this is how the system operates right, but when you're when you're looking at a fiat system, it could change. New Fed chairman, new politician, we're changing the rules. Mm -hmm. We're going to print this many, print that many. It's more egalitarian, fair uh, system to operate, and that's why it's such a superior system. That's why it's outperforming every other asset. And that's why, you know, when you really break it down, it's like if you're in Soviet Russia and everything was controlled by the government, uh, like. This is actually a factual true. Like in the, in the 80s, every, all the restaurants were owned by the government and people used to literally late, wait in line for foods. Then when it became a free market in the 90s, you know, there still was like free food being given out, but no one would even take the free food. It would go happily pay for a better user experience. It was such a superior thing that the market got to compete in it. And that's what we're seeing happen with cryptocurrencies, whether just kicking you know, fiat butt and, uh, and, and other asset classes. Because for the first time, we're getting a free market in something that's been monopolized for, for centuries or really forever. I mean, there used to be a free market in currency in some ways, but it's always been kind of dishonest, if, if you will. Like the United States used to have a gold standard, right? But, um, but that was always dishonest too. Like during the 30s, when we had the Great Depression, uh, they made it illegal to own gold. They made you a criminal if you own gold. So they could get rid of the free market pricing of it. And they could say, you know what? One ounce of gold is worth 25 bucks. Trust us. Trust us. Uh -huh. And then when that finally went away, gold went from 25 to 800 in a few years. And so they, we got to see how dishonest they were pricing it. So just a fair system to operate within. That's all That's all you know. I'm interested in is, is a fair system that I know how many Bitcoins are going to get mined today, uh, tomorrow, and in, in five years, and 10 years. I know exactly what to expect from the market. And as, as a human, that, that's a decent thing to do. And so for someone new that heard about Bitcoin, heard about Bitcoin Cash, would you say that buying Bitcoin Cash essentially right now today is like buying Bitcoin but cheaper? I try to be careful, even though I, I'm, I'm critical on uh, um, Bitcoin BTC. Um, you know, I do try to show it respect. I'm not trying to fight a war with people, uh, but you're getting the user experience back when it was a younger currency. You're, you're getting what made it great is what I try to, to say. Like Bitcoin did not become a, this world phenomenon by being a slow, hard to move around currency. It did not. That's just true. It, it, but, but since the blocks became full, um, it still has grown. Like, like Bitcoin is $45,000 today. In 2017, it was forty. Uh, $20,000. So it still is growing and it has a lot of people that have appeal to it. But the question is, can the store of value narrative be supreme if it doesn't have other great use cases? Um, and if you go again and read the book by Logan von Mises, uh, The Theory of Money and Credit, you'll, you'll see that like gold became great money because it, it had other use cases that made it uh, valuable to people. It was great for dentistry. It was great for conducting electricity. It had other use cases. So you can't just be unuseful and be money. We've never seen that, you know, at least in economic history. So would I say that? I, I would say that, like, like if you listen to Anthony Pompliano, who's a very big Bitcoin maximalist, uh, he believes that Bitcoin can figure out, because they still want to be money, right? They're trying to do the Lightning Network. They, they, they understand having utility is important, at least on some level. Uh, Anthony Pompliano said that he believes the network effect of Bitcoin can carry them far enough um, can carry them far enough to when they can actually figure something out, right? <laughs> so that's the question. So I would say to hedge. I, I would own, and that's why I do own some uh, Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash, uh, because if the market realizes that what they did in 2017 was wrong and Blockstream is wrong, uh, you're going to watch uh, Bitcoin Cash go parabolic, if, if not increasing the block size, of censoring the base layer, of not believing in Moore's law. If all these things that they did was wrong, uh, Bitcoin Cash will become... Essentially, I mean, like a fifty trillion dollar asset in the sense that at least if it shares, you know, cash is a hundred trillion dollar asset class, and Bitcoin Cash is a twelve billion dollar asset. So the upside potential is huge.